guide my soul to thy sacred light. Blessed I grant, thy eternal light protects me. Thy divine wisdom guides me. Quiet. Thou my path is rolled of darkness. Shut up. Run! Three thy way opens. Blood show. This doesn't make any sense. Blood. Blood. Blood is the key. B blood is the key. What? I need two of you. Go. I'll hold them. Go. So. It, it says the, the blood of the willing goes. Ugh. You gotta be kidding me! Ah, it worked! We have to help him! He's dead already. Oh well, cheer up. Gold splits better three ways instead of four. Must be hidden here somewhere. Read this. But by three they come, by three thy way opens, by the blood of them. Willing. Hail, hail the cre the creator. Ha! Oh, hail the daughter of. Oh no, 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 no! What about the coin? What's it say? This is forbidden. This is a summoning. I cannot speak. This Don't way. lie to me. We came here for treasure. What is this place? I I, I don't know. <sighs> Maybe, maybe it's a temple, or, or a tomb, or...
my eternal life protects me. The divine wisdom guides me. Through my path is will to darkness. Guide my soul to thy sacred place. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. <sighs> yes. And all the knowledge you seek is here. Surrender. Speak the words. Call her home. By three, they come. By three, thy way opens. By the blood of the willing, we call thee home. Needless to say, uh, when that debuted at BlizzCon in 2019, um, obviously there was other stuff going on around that, at that time. But that's how they started the show. Well, technically it's not how they actually started the show. They started with a show with uh, an apology about recent events at that time. Then they started the countdown. And the countdown went down to five... And then that cinematic started. At the time, a number of us were go like, oh, it stopped at four. Did you notice that? And I immediately realized this was a cinematic for Diablo because it couldn't have been for anything else. And we just knew, we all knew that it was Diablo 4 they were announcing. And I especially knew that was the case when I started to hear what the cleric was saying, like when he was saying Akarat, and then of course when he said creator, daughter, and I was like, okay, they're going with Lilith for this one. Interesting. 
So I'm going to go ahead and address this and say this right from the beginning to let anyone know who's tuning into this. Uh, gosh, how do I put this into words? Um, I'm going to not hold back in my criticisms of this game when it comes to its lack of acknowledgement for three. Because I'm going to let you guys know right, right from the beginning, the, one of the first things I'm going to let you guys know Diablo 3 is my favorite Diablo game, and it still is, even though I have been enjoying with my time with this game in recent uh, times, because I'm recording this at the time that Season 4 is now underway, and I have really enjoyed what they have done, because when this game first came out a year ago, I didn't really like it that much, and I know I was not alone. A lot of people did not like it. However, changes they have made in this current patch have really helped with the game, a lot of stuff when it comes to the game and its loot, um, changing a lot of stuff has really helped. It feels like they realized how much of a change... <laughs> Gosh. In my time with this game, I feel like one of the biggest problems with this game is that they wanted way too much for this game to follow in the footsteps of Diablo 2 instead of Diablo 3. And I'm just going to say it right now because I said Diablo 3 is my favorite. I don't just think, I don't just feel like Diablo 3, Diablo 3 isn't just my one, my favorite Diablo game. I consider Diablo 3 one of the best designed games of all time now. I know people are going to bring up how, how it launched. To me, the version of Diablo 3 that launched, it no longer exists. Therefore, we shouldn't acknowledge that version anymore. But the thing is, so many people to this day consider the launch version of Diablo 3 to be their only impression of that game, and they've never gone back to it since and seen how much that game has changed. That version of Diablo 3 that you saw when it first came out, it no longer exists. It's a completely different game now, and it's a much better game. It's one of the best designed games ever, and I'm that's a hill that I am going to die on. I don't care what anyone says. Diablo 3 is a far better designed game than Diablo 2, and I have played both games to be able to make that claim. I have actually played through Diablo 2 on this channel, and I can tell you that I absolutely considered 3 to be a far better game than 2, and it's still better than this game. Now, maybe that will change with future expansions because i've heard they plan to do at least two expansions for diablo 4 and maybe this game will get far better in the future as good as diablo 3 so if that is something that you don't like me he hearing from me that i love diablo 3 and can and love it far better than diablo 2 and think that their inspiration to design this game in the footsteps of 2 instead of 3 was a bad thing for this game and that they need to take more notes from 3 instead of 2 then you could just go ahead and stop the video and leave because I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hear it. You know, I'm not going to like, you know, you can just go ahead and leave. You don't want to hear somebody praise Diablo 3. And as I'm going through this game, I'm going to be criticizing the lack of acknowledgement from the developers of 3 and far too much acknowledgement and following of 2. Because in my opinion, based on my time in this game, they followed way too much of Diablo 2 when making this game and designing this game instead of 3. As it feels like they wanted to entirely skip over Diablo 3 in terms of the story and just simply have it be a continuation of 2. Because it feels like there's barely any connection whatsoever to 3 in the story, even though it's supposed to take place after Diablo 3. In fact, it takes place years after Diablo 3, and yet it doesn't feel like it. Oh, sure, there is someone we interact with who was from 3, and of course I'll talk about him when we get there. But... He may as well not be that character. He may as well just be some generic character. I'll talk more about this. And it would make a difference. Sure, there are places you can go to in, in this game that are a callback to 3. But it sincerely feels like they wanted to ignore Diablo 3 as much as they possibly could when making this game. And I think it's to the detriment of this game. I feel like... In my opinion, I think the, the development team for Diablo 4 were so concerned in the back of their minds about the outcry and crying and whining of Diablo 2 fans, especially the hardcore Diablo 2 fanboys that kept whining and crying so much about the, the way Diablo 3 felt and looked when it came to the lack of darkness and all that stuff, that it really ended up hurting this game in the long run. 
I want you guys to think back to the when they announced this game. How many times throughout that ceremony when the lead game designer, whatever his name, came out and he kept saying the word darkness. He kept saying dark and darkness over and over and over and over to the point where I was just like, can we keep a counter of how many times this guy says darkness? I get what he's doing. He is trying to appeal to all these Diablo 2 fans that were kept saying and criticizing Diablo 3 for how it wasn't dark enough and all that stuff, which I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> Ugh. I am. I have been sick to death for years hearing these Diablo 2 fans, like, whine about the lack of darkness in Diablo 3, which I just laugh at because that game is very dark. They just don't like the artistic style. And I'm just like, first of all, the, the the art style in 3 actually is not as harmful to my eyes compared to how it was in 2 and even in this game. There are times where that whole dark look just would hurt my eyes when I was playing Diablo 2. My eyes have never felt that way playing Diablo 3. Like, believe it or not, darker doesn't necessarily mean that's what's best for you to look at. But... Then again, some people have very strong opinions when it comes to how they believe a game in this franchise should be. I've seen people say that this game is all about horror, and therefore that's all it should be about, is how horror, you know, you know, all the blood and the gore and how terrifying and scary and horror-filled it is, and yeah, that whole thing, and I just get so sick of it. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. If you have a weak stomach when it comes to things like blood and gore, that cinematic trailer you just saw should probably give you an idea of what you're in store for because they don't hold back on the gore in this. Although it's funny, there are a couple of instances where they actually do and I just laugh and I'm just like, okay, you're willing to show this, but then you're not willing to show this? Developers, if you're going to make a claim that your game is going to be filled with blood and gore and darkness, then at least commit to what you're saying. Don't show it in one instance, but then hold off and like oh we're not going to show that that's too far in another instance that's way that i don't like that havesies commitment thing if you're going to say this is what we're we're doing if you're going to say something that you're committing to something then show it don't <laughs> don't give half effort in that is my point and I'm saying that as someone who's not into blood and gore and such. I don't really, I don't like it. And there are times throughout this game I'm just like, ugh, come on. Where I'm just like wishing the developers had at least had some, a bit of a restraint. But again, if they had, a lot of Diablo fans, especially ones from Diablo 2 back in the day, would have, would have whined about the developers' lack of showing gore because apparently they, they can't have enough of it. I didn't mean for this to become a rant, but this has just been something that has just been very irritating to me. That I feel like the internet filled with Diablo 2 fans have been so vocal in their dislike of 3 compared to 2 that it caused the development team for this game to focus way too much on having this be a successor to 2 instead of 3. Or a combination of both. I would be fine if it, if it was a combination of both if they wanted to take the good things of both games. But it feels like they didn't, at least not yet. I, I'm hoping that as the game continues its life cycle, that they will take more inspiration from the good things that Diablo 3 did in the long run and add it to this game. And I feel like that's what they're doing now with Season 4. I look at what they've done with Season 4 here in Diablo 4, and I feel like they saw what Reaper of Souls did for Diablo 3 when it came to Loot 2.0 in that game and how it changed Loot for the better in that game and they realized we need to do that with this game because and when this game first came out there were a lot of frustrations i had when it came to uh loot and how it handles like the legendaries and just like upgrading gear and such and i just i was not really enjoying my time with the game that and also when you're playing through the first time you lack some things that you wish you had access to and it's not until you complete the game on your first character that you finally get are able to do that and just to show it off in case you're wondering these are my current characters and as you can see i've been able to complete the game first with uh it ended up being my barbarian it wasn't really my intention to have my barbarian be the first character to do so but i ended up pulling it off and i have actually been able to unlock torment 4 with this character i did a it, level 70 it's doing the thing where 
you have to level in order to get access to certain areas or certain things. Otherwise, it's too high level for you, which I've never really been fond of. I prefer the scaling tech that they've been using in World of Warcraft since Legion, where the, the game scales with you. And it sort of does that once you reach the minimum. But, yeah. So, I've gone through and I've been able to unlock a number of things. Uh, like, once you get access to horses, it becomes an account-wide thing for your characters on this realm. And once you also get, like, the Shrines of Lilith, you get those buffs for all your characters on these realms. So, you can see this is my Barbarian. This is my Necromancer. This is my Sorceress, and this is my Rogue. Um, and that should give you a hint as to what we're going to be playing in this uh, playthrough. Because we are going to be playing as a Druid. But I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, when it came to... So, like... This, this game doesn't have what you... What I can do in Diablo 3, which is I can set uh, difficulties... Based, you know, based on what I've done with other characters, you know, like I cannot create a new character and set it to Torment 4 now, even though I've unlocked it on my Barbarian, you have to unlock it with each character. So not everything is account wide unlocks in this game. There's plenty that are, but there are still some things you have to unlock per character. Like I would have to go do the capstone dungeon to unlock Torment 3 and Torment 4 on these characters per character. And I hope that changes. Because having to do that with every character is probably going to end up getting old for a lot of people. That's just my guess. Maybe they're planning on changing that anyway. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And I'm especially hopeful to see that when the expansion, Vessel of Hatred, comes out later on, that not only will we get another class, but we'll get some more features and changes that will be make the game even better. Understand, guys, I'm not saying this as someone who hates this game. I don't. I like this game. And I want to love this game, because I love the Diablo franchise. I love Diablo 3. I like Diablo 2, though I will say I have gravitated more towards the modded version of Diablo 2 than the regular version, because mods just let me do a number of other things I wouldn't normally be able to do in the game, which I find very appealing and fun. And I want to love Diablo 4. I'm just not there yet, because there's a lot of things in this game that frustrate me. Not just, And I'm not talking just from a gameplay perspective. It's especially also from a story and lore perspective. Because again, the story feels like it's not really continuing anything from 3 at all. And there's a lot of stuff from 3 that gets untouched, unresolved in this game. And that really, really upsets me and irritates me. As someone who actually cared and wanted a lot of stuff in 3 to actually get touched upon and resolved in this. And it doesn't, but I'll get there. I may end up having some rants throughout this playthrough, and I apologize for that. But that just shows my my frustration in a game I want to love, and I feel like I can't because of external things that caused the game to not be what I would have liked it to be. And I know I'm not alone in those feelings, because I know I'm not the only one who loves Diablo 3. There are plenty of others who have gone back to it and realize how good of a game it is and how and how and I'll also love it as well. So anyone who says Diablo 2 is garbage does not know what they're talking about. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear on that. And I'm sure those of you who get irritated about me talking before we actually start playing the game are looking at the clock going, wow, it's 26 minutes and you haven't even started playing the game yet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Or something along those lines. I'll, obviously, I'll edit it because there's some stuff i got to cut out of this video. But, ugh. So, anyways. I struggled with what we are going to play through this uh, campaign as. Um, the thing is, gameplay-wise... <sighs> so, obviously, if you want the easy leveling experience... Play a Necromancer. Seriously, just play a minion Necromancer and you will have a much easier time because I really like what they've done with the minions with the Necromancer. However, the thing is, we've already played through a Diablo game as a Necromancer. So, we played through Diablo 2 as a Necromancer. And as you guys saw, like, I was going back and forth between, like, using skeletons as well as using uh, the Blood Golem, is which I ended up doing in order to actually make it through some of the bosses. And I really like what they have uh, done, and I can talk about that uh, separately if I want. But the thing, and uh, in Diablo 3, I first played as a Crusader in uh, Diablo 4 years, uh, Diablo 3 years ago on PS4, is what I'm trying to say. 
And in my alternate playthrough, you can see me playing as a, uh, a wizard as well because I love Li Ming. And that brings me to my other point about uh, who we're going to be playing as. Here's the frustrating part, another frustrating part about Diablo 4. These characters are basically the same. What I mean by that is that there, it feels like there is literally zero difference in personality or character when it comes to any of these characters we play. No matter who you play as, it feels like they're all exactly the same. The voice actors are not given any freedom, it feels like, to actually express themselves when it, as, when it comes to their acting. I couldn't tell you a single difference between these characters. In D3, I could absolutely tell you the difference about how the wizard is very cocky and arrogant about themselves. The, the, the barbarian is, is grizzled and wise. The... The, the the crusader is extremely determined in their cause. The witch doctor is someone who very much is wanting to help people. The monk is someone who believes in following the spirit's guide and actually going through and helping and being their, their servant in their various different ways. Like, I am their fist. I am their eyes. Um, the necromancer is someone who, who believes in serving the balance. There's... All these, and, and the actors are given that freedom to express those personalities and those characteristics in their voice acting. The wizard, especially, Li Ming, of course, she was played by one of the most accomplished voice actresses uh, in the industry. Um, so, I mean, yeah. So, because of the frustrations that these characters feel exactly the same no matter who you're playing as, I basically had to kind of rely on a couple things. One, which one would I actually want to go through and enjoy gameplay-wise? Which would also be a little different from what we've done before. The other is the actual actors that they chose. So, the thing is, all ten of the choices in terms of the ten actors they chose, none of them are bad. But, some, but because of the lack of personality and characteristics, a lot of them feel kind of flat to me. Especially the five male actors. Now, again, I'm not trying to criticize their performances. I'm criticizing the lack of voice direction and the writing. Because it feels like the developers gave, like especially in the voice acting department, gave these actors a lot less to work with. They gave them a lot less freedom to actually showcase their talents as voice actors. In three, they gave them that freedom. In four, it feels like they restrained them. So because of that, the five male the actors, I just feel like just don't bring much. And I really did not enjoy their performances, unfortunately. I wanted to. Um, the five female ones, though, are the ones that actually I feel like are the standout performances. But not by much, because again, lack of freedom to actually do what they can as actors. So I started looking into their backgrounds, into their IMDb's, to see which ones I would actually like the most. The one that amused me the most was the male barbarian here. Uh, this gentleman... <laughs> hold on, I want to make sure I get his... Uh, I want to give him a shout-out. I want to get his name right. Let me make sure I... Okay. So according to the IMDB, and you can look these up, the male barbarian is played by Ray Chase. How many of you have played Final Fantasy XV? That's Prince Noctis. I'm not joking. The same gentleman, Ray Chase, who plays the male barbarian, is Prince Noctis from Final Fantasy XV. He's also apparently Cyclops in, I guess, X-Men 97, which I guess is the remake of the X-Men cartoon this year. I doubt it's the same gentleman who played him back in 1992. My guess is that it's the, the remake they're doing this year of X-Men 97, but yeah, that's the that's him. But unfortunately, when it comes to the male voice actors, that's like the only one I really like of a notable credit because a lot of them just have like listed as like, oh, they're just an additional voice. A lot of these actors don't really have that many like notable credits when it comes to their resume. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm saying that as a it's a shame because I would like to know more specifics of their characters, uh, but it, they're not listed as IMDb, you know, on their I, on their resume page. It's because I want to know more about, but unfortunately, they're not given that credit. The female necromancer, though, she has a notable credit that I like. That's Moira Thauderson 
from World of Warcraft. Yes, I'm serious. The female necromancer is Moira. My son will rule the Dark Irons, and perhaps all of Ironforge as well. Yep, that's her. Now, the female sorceress, apparently this is also someone who is in the Aladdin movie. No, not the animated one. The live-action remake with Will Smith as the genie. Yeah, she was apparently in that movie. And again, they do fine jobs. The one that caught my attention the most, though, and one of the reasons why I ended up choosing this character to play, we're going to be playing as the female druid. And the reason why is this. Well, there, there's two big reasons. One, because I want to enjoy going through this as a werebear and a werewolf, though we're mo ma mainly going to be playing as a werebear. A full werebear build with variations. I'm going to show you guys that. Plus, it's going to give me a chance to show off some variation because, as I said, we played as a necromancer in Diablo 2, uh, played as a wizard in Diablo 3. At least I will when I get back to doing that alternate playthrough of Diablo 3. So I wanted to do something different, and we're going to be playing as a, as a druid where I play as a werebear, partly because also I enjoy playing as a werebear in World of Warcraft since I got my werebear skin, so yeah. Plus I think the idea of playing as a werebear is actually pretty fun. It will also give me a chance to go through and showcase some stuff to you guys uh, that I may be able to go through a little slower, but that's good because because of the extra shrines and such, my alternate character is going to be a little stronger than usual, even though we're going to be playing this on Torment 2, on, not Torment 2, on um, World Tier 2. So it'll give me a chance to showcase that off. The other is the voice actress for the female druid. And now, like I said, they don't give them much to work with, but this actress is going to give what she can. You know why? Because it's Courtney Taylor. For those of you who may not recognize that name, that's Jack from Mass Effect 2 and 3. Yes, Jack from Mass Effect 2 and 3 is the female druid. And that ended up being the deciding factor because of course I have to play as Jack. Of course I do. So let me talk about the character customization. So first off, they say go and pick your body type. You know, and then you get to select a preset, and that's <sighs> here's the thing they say that there are a ton of combinations, like something million combinations that you can do here. here. The thing is, though, in my opinion, there aren't nearly as many customization options for your character as I would like. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a good amount here, but I've seen plenty more in other games, like. Dragon Age Inquisition had more character customization options than this game does. So I think you can customize your character a lot more in those games compared to in this game. Like, you can only have four different face variations. Different skin tones, different eye colors. A handful of different hairs and different facial hairs, though it's also referring to eyebrows mainly. And then some accessories for your character. And then you can also change, like, you can have markings or tattoos, and you can change if they want to actually look like actual tattoos or blood smeared, which I think some of these some of these options are cool options, but I would like more. Like, where's the options to, like, you know, mess around with how you want the face to look where's you know, or the body to look? Like, it feels like there could be more here. Now, this is a big step forward, though, in a Diablo franchise. Don't get me wrong. Because in the past, we haven't had these options. We've always had to stick with the pre-made characters. In 2, we had only one choice. We were just choosing the class. In 3, we could then choose which uh, gender to play, male or female. And that was it. <laughs> that was all we had as a choice. So this is a step forward for the Diablo franchise. I just would like more. You know, I feel like they could take a step further with this. Take some inspiration from some other games that really, really get into, like, adding all the different options for character customization for your character. You know? They could really step forward with this. So, anyways, um, we're not going to do much when it comes to the character customization here. Um, apparently, the skin tone will actually change the look of the fur of your bear i'm not entirely sure about that i've heard that that's the case that your werebear's skin will actually look a little different based on what you choose in terms of your skin color i guess i'm not entirely sure if that's the case or not but yeah um i'm actually tempted to have her go bald because jack you know it's the actress who's playing jack but um 
I thought about doing this here, but in testing, it turns out this can actually cause some weird issues in cutscenes. Uh, especially also when you turn back, it can kind of like clip into your shoulders and such. And clipping always bothers me when I'm making customer uh, customization options. So, yeah, I'm not really going to do much when it comes to character customization here. Um, not too much anyways. Uh, there is some stuff I want to go ahead and do here. But not too much. The markings is always an odd one because, again... Give me more when it comes to this. When you choose this, it you can't, like, further change this. Like, I can choose this, but then I, I can't change it even more. Like, I can't stick with this, but then also change what I want on the face, you know? Like, wouldn't it be nice if you had an option to be like, okay, so I want this on the body, but then I would, like, you know, this on the face, you know? Like, you can't combo the them. You have to... Select one of these and stick with it. And it and again, it feels like they could do more with this, and I hope they do in the future. I hope in the expansions and future patches, they will actually go ahead and be able to add more to the character customization and let us be able to further, like, even if you've already made your character, you can change some of these in the wardrobe. And I'll show that when we get there. But it really does feel like they could have done more. And there really is a lack of these. I really wish there was more. But anyways, I guess that's fine. So we're not skipping the campaign. No, we are not doing this hardcore. It's like, well, guys, the playthrough is over. I died. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm going to name her after Leah Stonepaw or is it Stoneclaw? Stonepaw. We're going to name her after Leah Stonepaw, one of my favorite druids from World of Warcraft, who is the leader of the druids of the claw. So, yeah, I could name her Courtney after the actress, and I'm tempted to do that, or name her Jack, but we're going to go with Leah to stick with the druid theme. Actually, hold on a second. Uh, hold on. Oh. There's a number of jewelry options if you want. Various different, like, earrings and nose rings, but... Anyways. And... Eternal, we're not doing season. The reason I'm not doing season is because the only th reason why is because it's to do the battle pass. That's literally it. Here's something I do like about Diablo 4 compared to Diablo 3. You can experience the seasonal content in the Eternal Realms. You just don't get access to the content from the battle pass. I can still participate in whatever the content is for this season once I complete the campaign in the Eternal Realm which is the main server outside of the seasons. The only reason to play a seasonal realm is if you actually want to get the rewards from the battle pass, which I don't really have an interest in anymore. I did so for a, a part, of, part of the way in the first season because I had a pre-order bonus for it, but that was it. Once that was done, I'm like, okay. And then I, I checked it out to see, double check whether or not that was the case. And it was like, okay, so I can still do this in the eternal realm. I just don't get the battle pass stuff, which I'm fine with, honestly. We're going to do tier two uh, to get this Moses. Again, even though I've got tier four unlocked on my Barbarian, I can't select like tier three for this Druid. So this is as high as I can go until we beat the campaign. So, yeah. Sanctuary was never meant for humankind. It was forged as a refuge from the war between the high heavens and the burning hells. Instead, it became a new battleground in this eternal conflict. A secretive group called the Haradrim has kept mortals safe. But now this once powerful order is a husk of what it was and Sanctuary's ancient creators have returned to claim the hearts of humankind. This is the story of their downfall.
should find better shelter before I freeze. So you can hear it in the voice, right? You can hear Jack in the voice. I was like, mm-hmm, yep, that's Jack. That's Courtney Taylor right there. I don't know if it's uh, Courtney or Courtney. She has an E in between. So I'm just going to call her Courtney. If it's the wrong way to pronounce it, I apologize. So I mentioned how there's a number of things that are kind of a realm unlocked. I just refer to it as account unlocked, but it's, 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 it keeps calling it realm unlocked because I guess it doesn't apply if you're playing on a seasonal realm. But what I mean by that is you'll notice I have basically in the entire map uncovered because I've done this on my barbarian, my main. I've basically un uncovered the entire map and I've gone around also collecting. I haven't collected all of them, but I'm in the process of doing so. Like... Uh, you can see, uh, like, up here in the corner, like, in a certain zone, I, I'm trying to collect all the shrines of Lilith. And every shrine you get gives you some kind of bonus to your all your characters on your realm. Um, some will give you a plus two in a certain stat. Some will give you skill points. Some will give you paragon nodes. Uh, and, you know, that's endgame stuff. So you can see I've got a lot of them. There's one over here. I can't seem to figure out where I haven't found it. And it's really frustrating me because I see 30 of 31. I look up the map to find them all. And I'm like, I, I feel like I've gotten them all according to this map. Where am I not finding the one I don't have yet? Ugh. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I guess I could go ahead and just claim these right now. Yeah, so they have these other systems in place that, uh, once you understand how they work, it's a little different. But, uh, I bring that up because you'll probably notice, look at that, it already just got us to level 2, just like that. But you'll also notice that right off the bat, I have 11 skill points. That comes from getting the shrines, which is why one of the reasons I want to go ahead and grab some of them uh, is to further increase the stats and even get some more skill points, because as you guys probably know... Skill points are pretty important and pretty valuable in, in a game like this. Just like they were back in the days of World of Warcraft, or even more so also today. Uh, not just back in the day, but today with Dragonflight and the skill trees being back. So normally, if this was a brand new character, I'd probably just have one skill point and be like, okay, well, I'll just get my one point here. Uh, but I have more to work with in that regard. So this is the skill tree for Diablo 4. It obviously is different and is taking inspiration. Like I said, a lot of this game is clearly following the path of Diablo 2 rather than Diablo uh, 3. Also, you'll notice I have 16 million gold. <laughs> Again, I've been doing a lot of endgame stuff, and a lot of it, just like Diablo 3, a lot of this stuff is account-wide. So I don't have to put this gold into a stat. So here's the thing. They, they took inspiration from both games, but in different ways. They took inspiration for the skill tree with Diablo 2. They took inspiration when it came to account-wide inventory and such for Diablo 3. So they're kind of trying to accommodate both, but I feel like they could have done more. But anyways. So yeah, you'll be able to put a point here. You can put more points into this category if you want. Or you could be able to put it into like things that further enhance it. So as I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on a werebearer build. So like... I. Well, there's a number of things I do like about this. Like, it'll tell you what type of skill this is. This is a basic skill, which is also falls in the categories of shapeshifting and werebear, which is going to be important when it comes to later uh, aspects that can further enhance and change how you play the game. And I've got a number of them unlocked, and I'll try to showcase some of them as we play through this. Uh, I don't have all of them unlocked. I'm trying to do so. Some of them you have to get by having the legendary drop and then salvaging it to add it to your codex. Others you can actually get by doing a dungeon. In fact, that's why I showed just a moment ago. You can see here, if I go to this dungeon, I'll unlock this aspect for my Necromancer where blood orbs will give essence. Or if I go to this one over here, for example, I get one for the Druid where Cyclone Armor will provide physical damage reduction. But there are some that I cannot get via dungeons and I have to get via... Well, I can't show it in right now. But you can only get them if you go through... Uh, if you have them drop for you and then salvage them to add them to your collection. So, anyways. 
Want to see how I look like as a werebear? Check it out. Not bad. Now let me show you how I look as a werewolf. I do like both. Now, unfortunately, I can't ha stay in there until I get a specific unique later on in the game, which lets either one become my permanent form, which I want to get both. <laughs> I want to get both of those. I really do. Because I just really love the idea of just having that as my permanent form, like I can in World of Warcraft, you know? But when I was preparing for this and testing, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I want to focus on a werewolf build or werebear build. And honestly, the werewolf one just wasn't quite doing it for me as much as I wanted to. Don't get me wrong, I do like it. Like, the fact that you can actually have poison on your werewolf attacks is a really cool idea. I think on paper, the werewolf thing works better for me than it does in execution. At the moment, I feel like maybe I'll like it more once I unlock more aspects as I level my druid and do more endgame content with my druid and get more legendaries, then maybe I'll like it more. But at the moment, I feel like Werebear is something that kind of like is gravitating to me more so. And honestly, I feel like as we progress, Werebear is going to be able to handle surviving a lot of the tougher stuff that comes later on. Because obviously the idea is that the werewolf is... Uh, able to do a lot of damage, but it's a little bit more squishy, whereas the werebear has a lot of stuff that makes them very tanky. You know? So... And I like the knockdown for crowd control, but I also like the big range and radius of Maul to make it where it just, like, hits a lot more. I like that. Now, of course, you don't have to stick with just that if you want to go for that build. You can do other variations. Like, I could get Maul, and then I could get Lightning Storm if I wanted, or Tornado. Or, heck, I could also just get Shred if I wanted to do a mix of the two. But honestly, I'm, I'm more so just kind of like, I like being able to stick with a certain theme. I like, ha you know, just ha having themes, you know, for these things. So, Pulverize. They would do, do reduce damage. They're stunned. I like me some crowd control. So then we get to the defensive skill category. We're going to go ahead and get... Uh, we'll get debilit debilitating roar for now, but you'll probably also see me get earth and bulwark. Mm, it could either heal me, or I could have it slow enemies. Which, there are things where it's like, hey, if you crowd control them, you do more damage to them. I may not have that yet. If if I need the healing, I'll switch. But for now, I'll just go ahead and go with this one. So let's see. Hmm. Spirit is a bit of an issue. They cost more spirit, but deal more damage. Yeah. We'll go with that for now. And then we get to the companion skill tree. Now, that's all the points I have for now. But then I can get wolves, or a poison creeper, or ravens. Now, I could get these and just keep them off my skill bars, because passively, they would just be with me doing stuff. Like, the passively, the poison creeper is going to poison an enemy in, in the area. The wolves will just uh, bite enemies for damage. The raven will also attack an enemy for damage. So passively, I could just have them here and not have them on my skill bars and then get other stuff if I wanted to. But they do have some other activatables, like the wolves will become unstoppable and attack an enemy for a lot of damage. The raven will swarm an enemy with other ravens dealing damage over time. And the creeper will... It's actually one of the better companions in the game. It will actually strangle enemies, immobilizing them and poisoning them for two seconds. It's re That's really good, especially when there are other things that let you do more damage to immobilized enemies, as well as damage to poisoned enemies. In fact, there is a talent that will allow the werebear... Where is it? There's another talent I can get where 
I will actually be able to do more damage to poisoned enemies as a werebear. I'm trying to catch which one it is. I know it exists. I, I've seen it. I'm trying to see which one it is. Unless it's not a skill, but a legendary aspect, which it very well could. I also like that it will let you know, like, what is overpower? Well, overpower is dealing bonus damage based on the sum of your current life and fortified life. So, anyways. Another close up in case you want to see. That's Pulverize. And that's the Roar. It also let you see the stacks there. So, in case you're wondering, what have I been doing with my other characters? Well, my Barbarian has a. Uh, I've been doing a bleeding rupture build for my barbarian. My sorceress, I've uh, gravitated towards fire. My necromancer for now is doing a minion build. Later, I'll probably try out a like a blood build, especially when I get her to the end game stuff. But leveling uh, minions is a great build for just leveling your necromancer. So if I was to recommend a single class for you to play in your first uh, time playing this game for leveling, Absolutely just pick the Necromancer and just focus on your minions, like your skeletons, and then your golem, because it will be really helpful. Like, they do really well. Also, this is an example of what I'm talking about when it comes to the developers here deciding, we're not going to hold back on the gore. Oh, it's already gone away. But let's just say, this, that's not going to be the first time we see a horse just laying there, cut in half with its, with its guts out. Like I said, this game is not gonna hold back most of the time when it comes to the gore. So if you don't have, if you have a bit of a weak stomach when it comes to that, don't play this game or don't watch somebody play it because it's gonna gross you out. Another abandoned town. Demons everywhere. Fangs in the dark. Gah! He bit me. Careful, he's a wild one. What's going on here? What's it to you? Also in hush. I'm sorry, Wanderer. You've come at a difficult time. This madman just stumbled into town and started causing trouble. Demons spilling from the ruins. Kill us all. Kill us all. Ruins. What is he talking about? Come, I'll explain. There is evil staring in the ruins to the north. That poor monk back there must have gone inside. Even a holy man like him was driven mad by whatever he saw. Wh what's that? Y you say something? <sighs> Fire's looking good. But I should watch it a little longer. To make sure it doesn't go out. Oh, you poor thing. Traveling in this awful weather. If Devmir's taking up all the space by the fire, just give him a shove. <laughs> a warm hearth. There are still things to be grateful for in this world. <sighs> Fire's looking good. But I what about that monk? We'll do what we can for him. Might have to keep him in the shed for now, though. He tried to bite off Osman's fingers. What is this place? Uh, nothing special about our little town, but it's home. If 
finally some shelter from the storm. I'm sorry, it's a bit cramped. Still better than a cave. What can you tell me about the people here? Alenta went a bit deaf last winter. You might need to speak up around her. It isn't safe here. Could you protect us from whatever is out there? We have nowhere else to turn. The evil stirring in those ruins is an affront against nature. I will make things right. Truly? Oh, thank you. So that line there at the end that she had is a little example of what I'm talking about how there's extremely small differences between these characters to let you know which character you're playing. Because the druid is going to say, oh, there's a front against nature. Oh, hey, you're playing a druid. You know, that's an indication right there. And who you're playing as will say something different in based on your class. But that's basically it. And I wish there was more. I like it when they add extra things to add to the unique flavor of what character you're playing. It's one of the reasons why I loved Legion and World of Warcraft because there was a lot of class unique content. It gave relevancy to who and what you were playing. I like that. I don't like it when, when whoever we're playing feels exactly the same. So I like it when there's more unique things based on who you're playing. And unfortunately, there's a, 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 a huge lack of that in this game. Anyways, we will be heading to our first dungeon in this game. This is sort of the tutorial of the game. Um, the, real, the tutorial really ends, sort of, when you get to the first main hub, but that won't be for a little while. So we'll be heading to our first dungeon when we return. Stay tuned! <laughs> 